Um, good morning, everyone. And um, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mukesh, for that wonderful session. So uh, my name is Prakash Rao. And uh, I thought I'm going to spend the next half an hour in three uh, parts. Uh, one is I want to talk about um, how does the complete word digital affect us, uh, affect companies, affect HR, affect jobs, affect our life. And then the next 10 minutes, we can talk specifically about what does it do to HR. On the last 10 minutes, I'll try to give you a demonstration of what we've been trying to achieve uh, in trying to make HR digital uh, at People Strong, right? So how, just before I start, how many of you here are HR practitioners? OK, so the rest are all, I, I would assume, are other students? Yes. Yeah, or students. So you guys are all students in the field of HR? Interested in getting into HR? Marketing. Marketing. OK, great. So you're in the right place then. Right, so um, HR is all going to become uh, marketing. So let's first understand what is digital. So the biggest question was, what is, what is digital? How do you, how do you is, is uh, some people confuse digital and automation a lot, right? So um, I, I was, uh, I read a joke. Um, uh, somewhere and I that really aptly described what digital is. So you know when when you ask uh, you know God please save me, God then says you know do I save you as JPJ or PDF, right? So so that's a very good example of being digital uh, to that extent, right? So um, so that's one of that's one of uh, you know um, wanted to just get some smiles from the, across the room. So let's talk about digital. So from 2000 onwards, 52% of the Fortune 500 companies are no longer there. Okay, since 2000, in the last 18 years, 52% of the Fortune 500 are no longer there. They're no longer there because they were not able to make their journey into digital organizations. So that's how digital is affecting organizations, right? Now, what's going to happen to jobs? You all have heard of, of AI, uh, is going to, robotics, AI, neural networks, it's going to take away all our jobs. So as an HR person, I'm very concerned, right? So uh, because I'm a, I'm a practitioner through and through. I started my journey in emphasis, um, you know, um, uh, some in 1998, 99, when BPOs had st just started, and I've and I've built my career in HR, working on Excel sheets, working on Fox Pro. I don't know how many of you heard of Fox Pro. We used to work on Fox Pro, um, on Word documents, uh, mail merge, make offer letters, right? Um, uh, collect hard copy of documents. Uh, so I've I've made my career as an HR practitioner doing the hard work. Today it's come to a uh, day and age where most of these jobs are getting completely automated. So what's going to happen to jobs tomorrow? What will an HR job look like, right? So because the news is that 25% of these jobs will go away. So before I talk about what's going to happen to jobs, let's talk about how is digital, what's the workforce that we're dealing with? Some of you HR practitioners, what is the workforce that we're dealing with? So in the digital age, you no longer, the classification of, you know, people are baby boomers, then you are Gen Y, Gen X. So all of that is going to go away. All that's going to go away, we're going to look at workforce in terms of what's their adaptability to the digital future, right? So are you, are you a digital native? Like, like you know, I've, um, I've got a niece who's just six years old. Um, she knows how to connect her iPhone to the network and, uh, you know, stream movies from an iPhone to, the, um, you know, to her laptop to this one. And she ensures that all the photos that she's taking is everywhere. Uh, you know, they're all completely connected. They're backed up. She's, she's just five and a half, six. So these are digital natives. They don't need to be taught what is digital all, all about, right? So when she, when she, you know, these guys expect when they, when they go somewhere and if they have to climb steps, for them, they're like, okay, this is, this is something different. This is manual labor. I have to climb steps. Are there no escalators here? That's how they think, right? Digital natives. To somebody, so... When you look at your workforce in large organizations, so we work with almost close to uh, 10 lakh you know, people. 10 lakh people are on our platform. Uh, we work with manufacturing industries. Um, we work with new age industries, which are just two or three years uh, old as well. So when you look at the complete workforce that you have in organizations, you get people who are, who are struggling to go digital. So people who don't accept the digital world at all, who are still comfortable in pen and paper. They want to put their signatures. That's how they've worked. There are people who are thinking about digital but don't know what to do about it. I don't know what to do about it. I'm, I'm thinking digital. There are people who are taking steps to move to digital. And there are people who have already become digital natives. So the biggest question we need to ask is, which group are you a part of? And which group are your workforce a part of? Because that will help you to see what should be my digital strategy. How much can I push my workforce 
from an HR perspective for them to adapt digital because as an HR I can buy the best of technologies but if my workforce is not going to adopt it and if they're not going to use it then it's not going to make sense right so the first thing is you need to know where your workforce is what percentage of your workforce lies where that will help you to design a strategy of how are you going to make your HR digital and how are you going to ensure your employees adopt it right so if this is if this is how your workforce is how is it changing HR let's talk about you know like like Anita ji said how is it going to impact HR so these are some of the examples of how it's impacting HR right so so paper resumes right so we had we, all of us have worked with paper resumes so you're not going to have paper resumes anymore all of it's going to be digital CVs wherein you transfer CVs uh, earlier you should take paper resumes now we say email your resume tomorrow it's not going to be an email your resume a person's going to walk in and he'll give you a URL so the URL you're able to get all the details of the person right next is multiple interview rounds right so um, I, I remember when I joined people strong uh, almost uh, nine years back I was one of the few members I went through six rounds of interview including meeting a board member uh, so today in this day and uh, age I can't imagine people going through so many rounds of interviews until you're joining a leadership position because of the fact that people are going to go through digital assessments I'll give I'll give an example here so you know, access bank right um, a large bank they used to they hired a lot of people for the frontline workforce so when we did a when we they wanted to do a project because they realized that 25 to 30 percent of their frontline manager time is going in conducting interviews turnover is high they have to hire people when you have to hire people you have to meet people right so um, on an average they realized they're doing 30 uh, 78,000 interviews on a monthly basis 78,000 interviews because you meet six you like one right it's not that you're going to like every person you meet so how do you how do you how do you change this how, what do you do here so what they did was they they came to us and along with a platform called vbox we were able to introduce digital assessment what the assessment did was we we went and interviewed and did a poc with all people who joined access bank and were successful so we built a positive profile with the positive profile we said if you, you conduct this assessment in this assessment if a person get scores 80 percent then don't do an interview there's a it's of no use frontline sales hire the person if the person is between 60 to 80 one round of interview and hire the person below 60 sorry you know you, you don't work out for access bank that simple change they were able to reduce the interview count from 78,000 to just 20,000 the amount of time they were able to save for the line managers in fact, the HR reported that they were able to increase productivity of frontline managers by 12% just by removing frontline interviews. Now, this is, a, this is a significant area in which HR was able to get impacted, right? So, digital assessment. Next is HR portals to mobile app. How many of you guys here, um, you know, use a native mobile app for your payroll, for your attendance, for your regular things that you do? Yeah, great. I'm very happy to see that, right? So, uh, we did a survey with all the um, organizations we work with and asked employees why do you want to go on a mobile app for HR? If HR gives you a mobile app, what will make you go on it? What are the things you frequently use? 70% of them said 70 percent of them said that we're going to go on the mobile app if it's going to give us information about anything related to my money, my salary, my reimbursements. I, I go and mark my attendance and put my leave because I have to get my salary. 70% of them said, I want to go if it's related to my salary. Another 20% said, if I can learn something, talent management, can I reskill myself? Can you show me some learning uh, videos? Can I self-learn and can I get certified online? Other 20%. The last 10% were on talent management, which included performance and stuff like that, right? So surprisingly, 70% for were going to go on a mobile app only on an HR platform for salary. So if HR teams can put all basic things like leave, attendance, payroll, reimbursements all of this on a mobile app and give it to an employee that's another way of going digital right that's where HR is uh, world is moving to the next one is uh, you know when you're marking attendance these days you you have punch-in machines you either have punch-in machines you have swipe cards away you go to go next is can I just geotag a person all of you are on Facebook or Google do you get notifications when you go into a mall or see a movie oh you went to this mall can you rate this mall you have turned on your location the phone asks you if an employee, if I can walk into my office, why can't my office pick up the location and say you're, you're present in office today? 
Do I have to, why do I have to go mark my attendance? Right? I'll give you an example. Uh, we're working with an organization, a large pharmaceutical organization, which is CIPLA, of course. So in CIPLA's corporate office in Lower Parel, um, they've got around 4,000 people who work in their organization. They had three areas of entry into the building. In all of these three areas, they had a biometric device. So any person getting into the office had to put, uh, put their you know, um, a biometric uh, a punch in and then get inside the office. And their office starting is 9.30 to 6.30. So from 9 o'clock to 9.45, there would be a huge lo long queue to get inside the office because everybody had to put their punch in uh, to mark that attendance. Otherwise, it will get delayed. We were able to calculate that almost a person spent two minutes in the queue, not, not 10, 15 minutes, two minutes in a queue. But two minutes into 4,000 people per day was the amount of minutes they were spending just marking attendance. They moved to a platform where a person walks in on his phone, he's able to geotag and he's able to mark his attendance. As simple as that, right? Mm -hmm. Can you take digitization to that level? The next one is right time data. Can I give access to my line managers to right time data? Can I ensure uh, Mukesh spoke of analytics? The first step of analytics is availability of data. Can we ensure that wherever I am, can I get information about my people on my fingertips? Then you move to real time messages. So, uh, we spoke of Outlook, and so I think you know we 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 are increasingly realizing that the next generation will not be comfortable working on mails. They want to have they want to have conversations, they want to have dialogue, and how do you guys have your dialogue with your friends these days? WhatsApp, you WhatsApp them, you you work on messengers. Why can't we instead of sending mails send a message to my coworker and get the work done? So from transactional. Can we move them to conversational? That's the next step where HR is becoming digital. Then, of course, you know, uh, I will show some of these to you. Uh, you know, uh, as we're in the last five minutes, can we do digital matchmaking? How many of your recruiters here? Any recruiter here? So, what what is the wo uh, job of a recruiter today? What do you do? Yeah, sourcing of resumes. So where, where you, you get a JD job, job description, you go online, you talk to a person, and you interview the person to figure out does he match the skills I have. These days there's something called matchmaking, where the system tells automatically what is the percentage match of this person to the job requisition that you already have, right? Then of course, from help desk, there are, there are people who have to answer employee queries, can I have a chatbot answering all those queries? Then of course, Everything, the, these days, salaries, what we predict is over the next two to three years, salaries are going to go away from a monthly salary to an hourly salary. I will work six hours today, that's it. Because that's all I want to do. Can you just pay me for those six hours? I don't want to work eight hours. Right? That's where the world is moving to. And finally, from being HR business partners, HR business partners are going to become evangelists. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to talk to employee about, about um, meaning of work. You're not going to talk to employee about, okay, okay can I get you a letter? Can I get you a bona fide letter? What is your problem? Can I help you? They're going to become more of evangelists so that they're able to look at employee well-being as a whole, rather than just talk about employee related to their organization. So this is how HR digitization is, is taking shape. right? So now from here, I'm just going to move to our platform and give you a few examples of what I just spoke about. right? This is what PeopleStrong has done, but it's not just PeopleStrong. Any good platform today which is available in the market is working on most of those things which we are uh, talking about. Great, so you, got, you guys can all see the screen. I'm just giving you an overview of, of you know, uh, Alt is the platform that we work on at PeopleStrong. This is a complete suite from recruitment to work life, which is your HRMS, to payroll, to a messenger through which you can engage with your employees, right? So I'll give you certain examples. We spoke of, I just spoke of recruitment and matchmaking. Let me just pick up um, an example and show you um, how a matchmaking could work to make it to uh, a digitized workforce. Okay, technology, right? You always need a password. Okay, here, here you go. So there are some of these, you know, uh, requisitions. Let me just open any requisition. Some senior administrator networking infrastructure. So this is a requisition. Okay, so for this requisition. When a person puts a requisition, he says, OK, I need somebody who knows Java, English, networking, network administration, telecommunications, and deep packet inspection. I'm not a technical person, but these are the key skills a person requires. Can the system automatically tell me who are the people who match this requisition? So I just clicked on Auto Match Candidates. 
it's just showing me the top list of people who match this specific requisition with their CVs and their years of experience from job boards. What if I want to pick up from social profiles? So these are people who put their CVs on job boards. What if I want to go to social profiles and pick up, you know, passive candidates, candidates who are not active currently in the market? I go to social profiles, it will tell me who are the people from social profiles who match this requisition. So these are the people. I hope none of them are here actually. That will be, uh, so, so these are people from social profiles who match this uh, profile and, and they are from somebody from LinkedIn, somebody's put their CV on, on Twitter, on Google+, right? This is how matchmaking is working. Let me see if there's any person matching in company data. I don't think there's any company because this is a, um, this is a test database, so there's nobody matching company data. But it'll also tell company data. If I have a new requisition, if there are people within the organization, it'll pull up and say, okay, you know what? Don't go outside. There's two people within your organization who are best suited to do this job. So maybe I, do, I should just run an IJP rather than going external for a profile, right? One area of digital. Uh, now let me pick up, pick up some other aspects. We spoke of, uh, Mukesh spoke of onboarding. And when he joined the organization, he spoke of how he had to fill up so many documents to ensure that you know, we, are, we are completely, you know, he, to authenticate that, that he's the right candidate. So the, the new age employee, employed two years down the line, will not have to provide any documents. He has to provide just one document. Guess what the document is going to be? Any any guesses? CV. CV. Okay, CV. This one document. What will be the document be? He's saying CV. Any other guesses? Two years down the line in India. Aadhaar number. You just have to give your Aadhaar number, right? Because your Aadhaar is linked to your bank account. Your Aadhaar is linked to your PAN number. Through your PAN number, I can also pick up. What is the credit score of a person? So two years down the line, you just have to give an Aadhaar number. And UIDAI is also doing integration with ATSS. So we're doing an integration with them. If you give me your Aadhaar number, I can pull up your complete information, pull up your credit score, and tell the organization that you're going to work for that this person's planning is so good because of your credit score. So some people believe that if, uh, BFSI Industries are these days saying that we will look at a person's credit score to hire a person. Because if you have to work in BFSI, you have to be a good financial planner, at least an average one, not a good one, right? So provide an Aadhaar number, I'll pull it up from there through your onboarding, and I will tell you whether you're a good person to get hired or not. No documents required. Your Aadhaar has your PAN number, it has your address details, Aadhaar itself is an ID. And I can also pull up biometric information if I want. So no documents required. That is how onboarding is going to work, right? I can't show it to you really because I can't pull out anybody's Aadhaar number. So I'll not be able to show the demonstration uh, to you, right? So let me show you some other demonstrations in terms of how it works. So I saw some HR practitioners here. How many of you guys spend time in providing letters to employees? Letters? Employees need, I need bona fide letter. I want to take an address proof. I want, to, I want to take a postpaid letter. I want to take a visa letter, right? Multiple letters people want. So all of this becomes one specific activity where we say, yeah, write to this ID, you'll get it. Or they will come to you, have to take a printout, get the person to sign it, and give it to the employee. What if you're able to create all of that on the fly and give it to the employee? Employee doesn't even have to come to you. It just gets done on his own. I just go here and say, I need an address proof letter. And I put the information as to what I want, right? I do that, here's my letter. It comes with the barcode. So the, the option of an employee cheating doesn't exist, right? So, so automation at the lowest level. So at the highest level is where you're automating an employee's experience and you're, you're, you're automating your recruitment. A lowest level where you're automating a person's simple transaction, like giving him, you know, him giving you a letter. That's, a, that's another example. Okay, so uh, I wanted to show you one more uh, thing before I could uh, get to questions, which was on Genie and Messenger. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show my, show, you know, I put my phone and show it to you. Uh, the next level of automation is where a chatbot is talking to an employee and giving him all the information. Um, 
all of you right now, right now it's it's February, right? All of you who's working professionals have done your investment declarations and investment proof submission, right? Income tax, we have to submit our proofs to save tax, right? So imagine an, uh, imagine a work life assistant coming on there and saying, hey Prakash, today is the last day to pro pro you know submit your proofs. These are the three things that you declared that you will give. You said you'll give a home line home loan interest proof. You said you're going to give something related to your insurance and something related to your medical bills. Can you please submit online right now? You say yes, I want to submit. It'll open up. It'll say it'll open up the camera saying just take a photo of the bill. I take a photo of the bill and I'm done. I'm done. At the end of the month, it comes in and tells me the genie comes in and tells me, okay, hey Prakash, your salary for this month is X rupees. This is X minus hundred from last month. Why was this? A, why, why is it hundred rupees less? Because you forgot to do this this month. Now I'm not. I'm not going on asking HR any question. Somebody is coming and telling me. So when when you when something like this happens, employees start getting a feeling that there is somebody thinking about me, right? Somebody somebody talking to me. Somebody thinking about me. Somebody interested in ensuring that I get my money completely. So this is this is where the HR digitization world is moving to, right? Um, I'm going to quickly get back to my presentation and I'm going to just show you one more things before I could um, get back to you guys and ask about questions. I'm not able to connect my phone, Anita. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not able to uh, put the phone and show it to you. But if anybody's interested, once I'm done, I can show you a live demonstration of the chatbot on my uh, phone for sure. Right? So we spoke about this. One of the interesting things is we did a survey. Uh, there's a there's a uh, business today does a survey of uh, best employees to work for. Wherever the organizations have digitized, the employee satisfaction with their organization is increasing. So that's one direct impact of how employees are relating to digitization to their satisfaction as well, right? Um, I want to talk about future of work. What is the future of work going to look like? Uh, you know, uh, two years down the line. First one is it's going to be a visible world. Everything is going to be online. Uh, you would not need to carry any pen and paper. Everything is going to be completely visible. So that while it becomes completely visible, it's going to bring in questions of privacy. Is my privacy going to get taken away? Will everybody get to know everything about me? That's a question that the uh, you know HR needs to answer. It's going to be about an amplified individual. It's not going to be about about a group. It's about me as a person. Um, you know things like you know if if whatever major life changes is happening to me, can my HR support in that? Right. There's some elderly member in my family who's extremely unwell. Can I get a leave to manage my, can I manage my elderly person at home? Can I get benefits for that? Can I get a, a, a reward? Can I get a benefit of insurance because I'm under depression right now? I don't have any physical ailment. I need to get admitted because I'm under depression. Can I get, can I get health benefit, medical benefit for that? So amplified individual. How do you take care of an individual? Second is diversity. We, we, we've talking about diversity for a long period of time. In India, diversity is right now just stuck to how do we manage women. That's all that we're talking about. We're not talking about as an individual, what is, what is if, if I, have very, uh, I have very different choices, can my company support that? Right? The complete LGBT community, are we supporting them enough? Are we doing enough for that? Right? Uh, then it comes about science at work. Are we, are we looking at data? Are we, are we talking with perception? Are we talking with emotion? Or are we talking with data? That's the next place the world is moving to. Then, of course, sustainable enterprise. Everything which has to become sustainable. Um, I was reading reports of, of heavy smog in, in um, uh, Mumbai as well. In uh, Delhi, of course, we've been suffering for the last three, four years. Everything is going to be sustainable. Do we build up, do, are we building an enterprise that's going to help our environment? Or are we, are we, are we consuming more? That's going, to be the, uh, you know, that's going to be the new workspace. And finally, it's about, about the well-being of an employee. How do you ensure that the person is at the core of everything and you're helping the person? You know, cafeterias will, will start having food which, is, which, which will help a person being healthy. People will start moving towards, uh, towards benefits which will help a person become more healthy so he's becoming more productive, right? That's where the future of work is moving to. And, and that's going to impact rewards in four different ways for the, la the last one minute. Can you have your reward system which is, which is about, all about inclusion and flexibility? Can you have, like, like I give example of managing elderly. Can you have, do you have an adoption leave in your organization? Not just for women, for men as well. As a man, can I take three months leave? Because I want to stay at home and take care of my, of my daughter. And I want my wife to go to work. Can you allow that? Focus on an individual. Create plans which is for the individual and not for the organization. Right? And for this, what HR will have to do is that, now, 
all of us have one specific technology or certain benefits we give, can we create an ecosystem where an employee can choose what he wants? I, I, as an as a organization, I don't subscribe for it, but my employee wants to use it. Can I give him access to that? That's where the world is moving to, right? I'll just give a small example of what I spoke of last. Yes. Sure. I just, I'm just about to do that on individual, right? So, as an organization, People Strong doesn't uh, believes in certain things. I only can give that that much to an employee, right? My my employee wants to to go to a gym. I I can't give a gym in office. Can I tie up with a gym and create an ecosystem where you can access gyms? Can I create an online store for an employee? My employee at 11 o'clock wants a doctor. I don't have that facility. We are a small organization, we are just 800 people. So how do I give access to a doctor for my employee, wherever he is? Right? The third one is in terms of individual employees is that, how can I create something to what I, I want to learn music? Can my HR support me in learning music? Right? As an organization, I don't have this policy, I don't have any benefits here. For that, what, you, what employees are going to do is that HR organizations are going to move towards a partner ecosystem. So, I'm just showing you part of partner ecosystem that you know that that uh, people strong is doing uh, trying to do. So, you know, partners in terms of productivity, can I help employees to benefits partner? Can I give benefits like Zeta, where an employee doesn't want to use the benefits I give, they want their own benefits. Can I give them a card like Zeta? Can I give them XOXO day so that they can take whatever rewards they want? I'm not giving them a specific reward or a cash reward. I'm just giving them points. They can take whatever they want online. Then I'm saying, can I, can I have somebody like a doctor Insta? A doctor available 24 hours a day. Like an Isha Foundation, where I want to go volunteer. I want, I, want to, I want to work for the society. So can you give me options where I can do whatever work I want, rather than prescribing to what People Strong wants to do? And can I, can I, I, want, to, I, want, to, I want to travel. Can you give me access to travel wherever I want? Can you give me some subsidized tickets? So this is where an individual is at the focus and uh, not the organization. So what you do as an organization doesn't matter. What matters is what the individual wants and you, he's able to subscribe to what he wants. Right? So uh, that's, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Uh, now I'm going to open it out to questions uh, from you. We'll be happy to take whatever questions you have. Yeah, thanks. I'm sure this is a very uh, sort of interesting session. A lot of you got a flavor of ideas. We can take a couple of quick questions, and thereafter, I think, Prakash, you should just be available for people to sure. see some of the apps on your mobile. So any questions to uh, Prakash? Will we become faceless, you yeah, mean? Faceless. Yeah, so th that's, a, that's a question that uh, bothers everybody, right? So, so see, while digitization and AI is the future, uh, AI can't bring in two things for which human beings will always be relevant. Uh, it can never bring in intuition. It can never bring in empathy, right? <laughs> There's no bot which can, which, can, which can empathize completely with a human being. So for that, HR, for HR, human beings will always be relevant, right? So the way, what I said was, HR business partner tomorrow is going to become an evangelist. He's, you, the role of an HR business partner, the way we see today, where we're partnering with a business, doing some workshops, doing performance uh, uh, discussions, all of that will go away. While all of that gets digitized, HR will play a very significant role in managing the well-being of an employee. So what that means is that um, can, I, can I bring an ecosystem where I'm able to first understand what my workforce wants and then I'm able to help them subscribe to that. So HR, the person, the employee doesn't, hasn't still met me, but he feels my HR is providing me the best emotional support that I can, right? Like I said, the new age workforce will not want to talk to you and you can empathize with them. They'll be happy for you to have that conversation over email or over a message, right? The day of, of, of a physical hug or a handshake might no longer be there. The employees might not even come to office when gig economy kicks in, right? In that time and space, it's about how do you understand who my workforce is, how can I engage with him online, but still able to personalize the touch so that he feels that you're giving something that I want. You're not giving something that you want. That's where the, that's where the HR role will change.